Your guide to onions. A layered vegetable from the allium family, onions provide a bunch of flavor to a variety of dishes. They can be quite harsh when eaten raw, but become more milder in flavor when cooked. Onions are great in salads, on pizza, in sauces, and on burgers. They also have antioxidants as well as anti-inflammatory effects. Yellow and white Bermuda. Short day varieties with flat topped bulbs and either white or yellow papery skin. Texas Grano. A short day variety with white flesh, straw colored skin, and a sweet flavor. Vidalia Sweet. This one is really a Granix hybrid and is a short day variety. Red Burger. A short day variety that's red in color with a flat globe shape and a sweet flavor. Walla Walla Sweet. A long day variety, this one is large, juicy, and mildly sweet. Texas 1015Y Super Sweet. A short day variety that, as its name suggests, is very sweet. These onions grow quite large and have white flesh with a yellow white papery skin. Before planting, keep in mind that their ideal germination temperatures are between 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Direct seeding. You can start as soon as your soil is workable in the spring. Sow your seeds in a two inch wide band, about a quarter to a half inch deep, in rows that are spaced 12 to 18 inches apart. After seedlings emerge, you can then thin them to be about three to four inches apart. Sets. To produce dry onions, plant the smaller sets one inch deep with two to four inches between sets and 12 to 18 inches between the rows. Transplants. Some seed companies actually sell onion transplants. They can tolerate light frosts and you can plant them when temperatures reach 50 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also raise your own transplants by starting seeds indoors about 10 to 12 weeks before planting outside. To do so, sow your seeds three quarters of an inch deep, then keep them evenly moist. Loosen your plants when they're ready to transplant. And if you're starting indoors, seedlings can be trimmed with scissors once they're about six inches, 15 centimeters tall. Watering. Onions need a constant supply of moisture because of their limited root system, so you'll want to treat them well prior to bulbing. The larger the plant, the larger the bulb. To ensure maximum yields and mild flavor, give your onions extra water towards the end of bulbing and until the tops fall over. Once they do, dry weather is welcomed because the onions will cure faster and store better. Thinning. Thin your seedlings to three to four inches, five to eight centimeters apart, or wider for mammoth types. Bonus, thin plants can be used as scallions. Weeding. It's extremely important to weed around your onions, which is a slow growing crop. If you want good yields, you'll have to make sure you weed thoroughly, removing them as soon as you spot them. Using a hoe or hand tool, make a shallow cut to kill weeds just below the soil level before they become a problem. But be sure not to hoe too deeply. Fertilizer. Onions need more nutrients than other vegetable plants. So three applications of a complete fertilizer is recommended throughout their growing season. The first application should be applied about 40 to 60 days after planting. The second application in the middle of the growing season, and then the last application should be applied four weeks before the harvest. Keep in mind that periods of high rainfall or continual irrigation may increase your onion's risk of nutrient deficiencies. Mulch. An organic mulch can help control weeds and maintain even soil moisture. You can use herbicide-free grass clippings, weed-free straw, or other organic material to a depth of three to four inches to help prevent weed growth 
and also to reduce the need for frequent cultivation. Transplanting Best Practices First, trim the roots of your onion to a half inch and trim the tops to four inches long. Next, you can plant them two inches deep, three to four inches apart, in rows that are spaced 12 to 16 inches apart. Most of the bulb should form on the surface of the soil, so don't transplant them too deeply. Bulb size is also dependent on the size of the tops. The bigger the tops, the bigger the bulb. Make sure to also keep the surface of the soil evenly moist throughout your onion's growth. Companion plants do's and don'ts. Good companions. Plant chamomile and summer savory near onions to improve their flavor. Onions also work well alongside beets, brassicas, carrots, dill, kohlrabi, leeks, lettuce, strawberries, and tomatoes. Onions help repel the carrot rust fly, making it a great companion plant. Don'ts. Avoid planting your onions near asparagus. As well, peas of any kind are not good companions. Growing structure options. Raised beds. Onions are best grown in direct sunlight on raised beds that are at least four inches high and 20 inches wide. It's also best to add one to two inches of compost into the soil. Just make sure it's mixed in well. Cell trays. Sow three seeds into individual containers, thinning to two plants per cell after germination. These cell trays allow your onions to develop better roots, which is really helpful for their growth. Bulb mites. Pests that stunt a plant's growth, reduces crop yields, and causes bulbs to rot either in the ground or in storage. The damage caused by bulb mites can also create an entrance point for other pests and diseases. Here's what to do. Avoid planting successive crops of onions or garlic in the same spot. It might also help to fallow the field, giving it a break by not planting in it for a period of time, which will ensure that any organic residue decomposes completely. Crop residues can harbor mite populations, so make sure any residue is completely gone. As well, treating seeds or cloves with hot water before planting them might also help reduce bulb mite infestations. Onion flies and onion maggots. They begin as larvae, maggots, in the soil over the winter. Then they will emerge as flies in the spring. Females typically lay their eggs at the base of a plant's stem and cool, moist conditions will increase their chance of survival. The larvae will feed on the roots and stems of a plant, and the damage they cause can act as an entry point for soft rot bacteria. As well, this damage can stunt the growth of seedlings or make them wilt. If you try to pull up affected plants, often the plants will break at the soil line. Also, if an infestation happens while plants are forming bulbs, those bulbs will then be deformed and susceptible to storage rots after harvest. Here's what to do. Good sanitation is important, and all crop residue should be removed at the end of the season, since maggots will die without a food source. It's also important to remove any volunteer, wild onion and chive plants, as these can act as an infection source. Finally, floating row covers might provide some protection by preventing females from laying eggs around the crops. If there are noticeable symptoms from these pests, pull out all the plants and use what greens are salvageable. Then destroy the rest of the plant parts since the flies that produce onion maggots can continue to lay eggs, causing problems for future crops. As well, it's important to practice crop rotation. One last option is to place yellow sticky cards around plants to attract and trap the adult onion flies. Onion thrips. Insects that leave white specks on the leaves of a plant. Its larvae burrow into the underground stems and can cause young plants to turn yellow and wilt. Here's what to do. Remove any yellow plants immediately 
and practice good crop rotation. Insecticidal soaps can also be applied to deal with onion thrips. Botrytis leaf blight. At first, this disease causes small oval white spots to grow on the leaves. These lesions are often surrounded by a halo of green water-soaked tissue, and the lesion centers eventually turn tan in color and then collapse. If there are too many lesions on a single leaf, the entire plant top can die back, giving severely affected fields a blasted appearance. Here's what to do. The destruction of call piles and rotating crops for at least two to three years are two important ways to help lower the risk of disease outbreaks. Because these cultural practices are only partially effective and no resistant varieties are available, protective fungicides might also have to be repeatedly applied to crops. Neck rot. Infected scales will become soft, brownish, and spongy. Gray mold will form either between the scales or more commonly at the neck area, which becomes sunken. As a result, the entire bulb can dry out. Here's what to do. The most common way this disease happens is through the exposed areas when plants are topped before they have completely dried. To help reduce losing too many crops, plant varieties that mature properly so that neck tissues are dry before storage. Generally, colored varieties are more resistant than white varieties. Also, as harvest time approaches, stop watering plants to allow the plant's tops to dry. Allow the tops to fully mature before harvest, and then be sure not to store any improperly cured bulbs. Onion downy mildew. A fungal disease that damages both the leaves and bulbs of a plant, resulting in poor crop yields. Onion powdery mildew is mostly a problem in damp conditions. Here's what to do. Plant resistant varieties whenever possible and make sure to prune and remove any weeds to improve air circulation. As well, water onions in the early morning hours or use a soaker hose to give the onions lots of time to dry out. Make sure to also keep the ground under infected plants clean during the fall and winter to prevent the disease from spreading and remove and destroy any plants that have a serious infection. As well, this disease is somewhat easy to control on most plants when they're protected by a copper spray. Copper treatments can begin about two weeks before the disease normally appears and when weather forecasts predict a long period of wet weather. Or copper treatments can start when the disease first appears and then treatments can be repeated at seven to 10 day intervals for as long as needed. Finally, there are also some leaf sprays that can be helpful. Onion powdery mildew. A white powdery growth will appear on the upper parts of leaves and stems, and infected areas will become stunted and distorted. Here's what to do. Plant disease resistant varieties when possible and provide good air circulation by not crowding plants. Avoid over fertilization too. New growth is more susceptible to this disease so it helps to apply a slow-release fertilizer that provides more controlled growth. Potassium bicarbonate is another helpful remedy. Similar to baking soda, potassium bicarbonate has the unique advantage of actually eliminating powdery mildew once it's there and does the job pretty quickly. Finally, use milk. It's the latest player in the fight against powdery mildew. Try applying a weekly dose of one part milk with two parts water. Onion smut. A disease causing dark brown streaks that run up and down the leaves, which initially look like long blisters on the leaf surface. As these lesions mature, they turn brown and contain a mass of dark powdery spores that give the plant tops a sooty appearance. Diseased leaves might bend or twist abnormally, and those leaves are usually dropped prematurely. 
This fungus will stunt the overall growth of affected plants. Onion smut typically thrives in temperatures under 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and the fungus can live in the soil for several years. Here's what to do. Rotate crops and avoid planting in the same spot for at least three years. Also, encourage rapid growth of the plants with watering and fertilizer in order to get these plants safely past their vulnerable stage. Also, seeds can be treated with certain fungicides before sowing, while the seed bed can be treated with methyl bromide, a type of harmless gas. If onion smut is found on any plants, certain fungicides can be used to fight against it. Onion white rot. A soil-borne fungus that can cause the yellowing and wilting of leaves above ground, while rotting the roots and invading the bulb beneath the soil. A white fluffy fungus will also appear at the base of the bulb, and later that white fungus becomes covered in small, round black growths. Here's what to do. Follow a three to four year rotation with allium crops, onions, garlic, chives, to help prevent onion white rot. Also, it's important to properly sanitize any onion debris, especially called onions. Incorporate all onion debris into the soil immediately after harvest. No exposed culls should be present in the soil before the next round of crops are planted. It also helps to plant only high quality seeds while carefully inspecting transplants for signs of contamination. As well, avoid extra or late applications of nitrogen. Instead, it's best to use split nitrogen applications. Make sure to also manage any weeds, since that will improve air movement around the crops while allowing the tops to dry off faster. Pink Root Rot A fungus that attacks the roots of a plant, causing those roots to turn from light pink to red and eventually purple-brown. Pink root rot also causes roots to shrivel and stunts the plant's growth because eventually those affected roots will die back. Infected plants will show signs of nutrient deficiencies and drought since their roots can't take up water or nutrients. Typically, this disease lives in the soil for several years and thrives in warm temperatures that are above 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius. Pink root rot is usually caused by soil that's been heavily wet for more than two weeks. Here's what to do. Plant disease-resistant varieties if they're available, and try to plant as early as possible so that the bulk of the plant's growth will be in cooler temperatures. As well, long crop rotations of three to six years with non-susceptible crops will help reduce this pink root rot disease, but it won't get rid of it entirely. Drip watering is a good way to control plants' moisture level while also avoiding pink rot in the process. As well, plowing and mulching the soil promotes air circulation to fight against this fungus. Finally, soil solarization can also be helpful. Simply cover the ground with a tarp in hot weather so that it traps the heat from the sun in order to kill off the disease. If pink root rot is found in the garden, be sure to remove any and all infected plants. Purple blotch. Symptoms of this disease first appear as small tan spots on the leaves. Those lesions, which are usually surrounded by a ring of purple, eventually become sunken and will quickly expand up and down the leaf. If there are too many leaf lesions, they can cause the collapse of the entire top of the plant. Purple blotch favors warm and humid conditions, and it typically begins on the older leaves of a plant. The bulbs can also get infected by stem wounds. Here's what to do. Plant disease-free seeds in appropriate spacing to avoid excessive leaf wetness and to improve air circulation. As well, practice crop rotation and harvest in dry weather. Good drainage is also important, and it helps to avoid using excess doses of nitrogen fertilizers and to use fungicides frequently. Finally, avoid crop injuries and practice good field sanitation, like cleaning garden tools after working in a specific spot in the garden. 
harvesting. When onions start to mature, their tops become yellow and begin to fall over. At that point, you can bend the tops down or even stomp on them to speed up the final ripening process. As well, loosen the soil around the bulbs to encourage drying. Once the tops are brown, you can pull out your onions. A quick note, be sure to harvest in the late summer before any cool weather arrives because mature onions can spoil in fall weather. Storage. Store your bulbs somewhere cool. 32 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal and dry with good air circulation. You can do this either in mesh bags or in shallow boxes with newspaper layers between the bulbs. You'll want to check them periodically to make sure that they aren't getting soft spots or rots. In general, the large white sweet onions only store for a few weeks to a couple of months from harvest. Those that have yellow or brown skin with hard necks and a more pungent flavor will store for a lot longer, usually a few months. As well, onions grown from sets tend not to store as long as those grown from plants. It's also important to keep your onions stored away from apples and tomatoes, as these give off a gas, ethylene, which makes onions sprout. You can also freeze your onions, and it's easy to do. Simply peel, chop, and then loosely pack them into freezer bags.